Hello, you're watching the Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Israeli High Court orders expulsions in Hebron. Louisiana moves to declare abortion a homicide crime. Ecuadorian teachers go on hunger strike. And Brazil Cerrado at risk of major deforestation. In our first story today, the Israeli High Court has approved the expulsion of over 1,000 Palestinians from eight villages in Masafar Yata. A three-judge bench issued an overnight ruling on May 4th, bringing a 22-year-old legal struggle to a close. Located in Area C of the occupied West Bank, Masafar Yata is home to around 20 Palestinian villages. Israel claims that Palestinians have been living in the area illegally since the 1980s. This was after Masafar Riyata was designated as military firing zone 918 in 1981. Israeli documents from the time show that the express purpose of this was to expel Palestinians from their land. The people of Masafar Riyata have lived in these villages since before Israel was established in 1948. The Association for Civil Rights in Israel also presented aerial footage to prove their existence for 45 years. The High Court ignored this evidence and rejected the Palestinians' petition against the expulsion. It is important to note that one of the judges, David Mintz, himself lives in the illegal settlement of Dolev. Israel has designated around 18% of West Bank as military firing zones. The use of an occupied territory in a way that solely benefits the occupier is illegal under international law. The forced transfer of occupied populations constitutes a war crime and is prohibited. According to human rights lawyer Michael Safard, the High Court rejected that this claim was customary and binding. Instead, the judges called it a treaty norm, meaning that it would not be enforceable in a domestic court. If the Masafa Riyadh expulsion proceeds, it will be among the single largest displacement of Palestinians since 1967. Louisiana has become the latest state to restrict access to abortions in the United States. Republican lawmakers have advanced a sweeping bill that would abolish the procedure. Abortion will be classified as a homicide crime, potentially authorizing the prosecution of anyone who accesses or provides the procedure. The legislation also grants constitutional rights to quote all unborn children from the moment of fertilization. According to the ACLU, it would also criminalize in vitro fertilization and other forms of birth control. The Abolition of Abortion Act was approved with a 7-2 to two majority in the committee stage. It will now proceed to the Louisiana House of Representatives. These developments come just two days after the Supreme Court's draft ruling on Roe v. Wade was leaked. The conservative majority bench is set to overturn the landmark 1973 decision which legalized abortions in the United States. The draft has triggered protests amid growing fears of its impact on other privacy-based rights, including key rights of the LGBT plus community. The Supreme Court agreed to hear a challenge to abortion rights brought by the state of Mississippi in 2021. This paved the way for it to examine the precedents set by Roe. The court is expected to issue a formal ruling in June. If Roe v. Wade is overturned, regulations and restrictions on abortions will take effect in 26 states. An immediate ban on abortions will come into force in 13 states, including Louisiana, due to existing trigger laws. The proposed bill in Louisiana already states that it must be enforced without regard to the Supreme Court's decisions. We now move on to Ecuador, where teachers have launched an indefinite hunger strike this week. Members of the National Union of Educators are protesting in defense of the Organic Law of Intercultural Education, or LOEI. Fourteen teachers have set up a protest camp outside the Constitutional Court in Quito. Seventeen are protesting at the Plaza San Francisco in the city of Guayaquil. The LOEI will reform 80% of Ecuador's education system, which has been in place since 2011. It increases the education budget to 6% of the GDP and guarantees inclusive public education. Other provisions include the employment of special education teachers, an increase in teachers' basic salaries and benefits, including retirement. The law was to come into force in July 2021. However, it was suspended after a lawsuit by the Ecuadorian Social Security Institute. 
teachers went on a 32-day hunger strike urging the constitutional court to uphold the LOEI. The court ratified its validity and gave parliament six months to resolve two remaining issues. These were related to the financing of teachers' salary and a special retirement system. On March 13th, the National Assembly approved a grade-wise increase in remuneration for teachers. However, the reform was vetoed by President Guillermo Lasso on April 14th on grounds of unconstitutionality. On April 22nd, the National Assembly approached the Constitutional Court. The body has summoned the presidency and the legislature for a public hearing on the LOEI on May 12th. Meanwhile, teachers have stated that their strike will continue. And for our final story, we go to Minas Gerais in Brazil. The southeastern state could witness one of the largest deforestation incidents in the tropical Cerrado. The land in question is located in Bonito de Minas and has been slated for a major agro-business project. Activists have warned that the licensing and environmental assessment process have been fraught with negligence. This includes the project's potential impact on local traditional communities. Here is a video by Brasil de Fato on the issue. Let's have a look. More than 10,000 hectares of Cerrado, a tropical savanna biome, may be deforested in the northern region of Minas Gerais state. The Brasil Agro Company, the property's owner, intends to deforest the area to implement soybean and cattle production. In February this year, the preliminary license request was submitted to the responsible body, but environmentalists who followed the issue say the process is full of negligence. We know that in that small area, part of it was used in the 70s in an attempt to cultivate eucalyptus. The rest of the region directly affected does not have any use on a large scale. Thus, we can be talking about primary cerrado, untouched areas. Although the disputed land is not officially protected by environmental agencies, experts say that the area is home to important species of flora and fauna. One of them is the bush dog, an extremely rare animal in the country and an endangered species. Organizations in that territory warn that, besides not considering the real impacts, the environmental impact study and report also didn't take into account the consequences that the undertaking could bring to the traditional communities, which have been living in that region for centuries. We started... The state is quite fun because it uses the law when it wants to. It says, all oh, there is the possibility of these traditional communities requesting a public audience. Well, which traditional community has access to the public consultation published on the Minas Gerais state website? It shows disrespect for the people who will be harmed. Brazil Agro's preliminary license request was suspended in March. According to the company's statement, the project was developed democratically through discussions with the civil and local communities. The food will only be grown on the property with the permission of the government officials involved. It also says that more than 50% of the land will be preserved. What's Happening in Brazil contacted the Minas Gerais State Secretary for Environment and Sustainable Development, but the office did not respond. <laughs>